Hey, Facebook Live, this is William Michael Morgan. I'm hanging out with the folks here at AOL. Thank you guys so much for letting me do this today. This is going to be a lot of fun, answering some questions. Uh, I'm here in New York City, um, going around. I did the Today Show yesterday. That was so much fun. My first time uh, on national TV, my debut, as they say. It was so much fun. Um, I'm also here promoting my second single, which is a song called Missing, and, of course, still reliving my first single going number one, uh, uh, which is a song called I Met a Girl. And uh, just getting ready to get out on the road with uh, Justin Moore and Lee Bryce, starting our American Made tour um, on the se on the twelfth or the thirteenth of this month, I believe. And uh, it's bad. I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I'm really looking forward to that. Um, our brand new album just came out uh, before the end of the year, which is crazy to think that the year's already over with. 2016's already over with. Um, and it's called Vinyl. You guys go check it out. And uh, let's get you some questions, or else I'll just ramble on on this. <laughs> Well, thanks so much for being here. Um, got some really fun questions. So you just mentioned your your album vinyl. I know, like you said, 2016. Can't believe it's over. But you know, what was it really like putting that album together? Well, you know, it's a lot of work, and uh, we wanted to take our time with it. And of course, uh, we took about three or four years um, since we signed with Warner Brothers, mm -hmm. and just writing the songs, finding the songs. Um, making the songs our own, singing them out live, seeing what reacted and didn't react um, within the industry and out live, uh, playing for you know this bar room or this opening up for this guy mm -hmm. or this girl, and uh, yeah, you know you only get one first impression is what I've been saying, and we wanted to make it the best first impression that we could possibly make, especially for a new artist doing uh, uh, a, li a little more of the traditional style country music. So. Uh, it was a fun process. It was, it was a lot of time put into it, and it was it was fun. I'm proud of the I'm proud of the outcome. Awesome. I mean, it was obviously well received um, by everyone who who heard. Well, thank you. But well, thank you. A lot of people. So yes, that's really awesome. Um, and obviously, one of the highlights. Um, I met a girl, as you mentioned. Yes, um, so do you kind of want to walk us through how that really came to life? I mean, it's such a huge hit now. Yeah. Well, um, I'll tell you when we first heard that song. Um, I fell in love with it, you know, as cliche as that sounds. You know, the whole team kind of fell in love with it. It's just one of those deals that we couldn't stop listening to. Again, as cliche as that sounds. We uh, went into the studio, took it into the studio, and made it our own. When the, when the band, uh, uh, first off, let me say, the studio musicians in Nashville are the best musicians in the world, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Uh, they can hear something, <clears throat> half of a song, and play the whole song. I mean, it's, it's just unreal. And so uh, when they put their magic on it, and of course my producer Scott Hendricks and Jimmy Ritchie, uh, and myself when we went in, uh, everybody, you know, it was just one of those magic moments and everything kind of just melded together and uh, again, it was just a fun process. I mean, it, it was, uh, I think it was, uh, again, I hate to repeat myself, but it was just one of those magic moments that when we got done, we couldn't stop listening to it and, and, and I said, man, this is something that, that is special and I think we all unanimously, unanimously, whatever you say, <laughs> uh, voted that to be our first single and uh, I'm very glad we did. Um, that's awesome. Um, was it, were you, like, totally taken aback when it just shot up there? And Well, you know, it was a crawl, it was a crawl for sure, you know. We scratched and clawed and, and uh, you know, it was, it was, we broke the record for the longest um, single on a chart to go to number one. Oh, wow. It was 58 weeks. So, uh, it was a fight for sure. But because, you know, one, we had, you know, we're new artists. You know, we're wearing a cowboy hat. <laughs> we're doing, you know, we're doing something a little different than what uh, is in today's music, you know. But I think that's what's so great about country music, you know. They allow this, they allow that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think uh, I, like to, I like to put it as we're all on one highway, one person's in the left lane, one person's in the right lane. There's a few in the middle lane, too. <laughs> and uh, we're all just getting off at the same exit, you know. It's just all a matter of how uh, someone wants to present it. You know, I grew up listening to Merle Haggard and Keith Whitley and mm -hmm. George Jones. Mark Chestnut and people like that, but that doesn't mean that this guy grew up listening to that, or this guy or mm -hmm. girl grew up listening to this. Mm -hmm. uh, so everybody's influenced by different things. You know, I think it's just a matter of how you present it. Um, that's perfect segue to our next question, which is, how did you really first fall in love with country music? Well, again, I just grew up listening to Merle Haggard mm -hmm. and, and and that more traditional style of music. I I just love the realness. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's sad, slow, fast, happy, it doesn't matter. You know, you, you feel that realness as soon as the song kicks off, and uh, and you know who it is within the first mm -hmm. two or three lines of the of the song, uh, or two or three words even, should I say? Yeah. And 
so yeah, I think that's more that's that's more of my influence, you know, just the more barroom style <laughs> realness. Yeah. Right. Um, so kind of a fun one, um, <laughs> maybe also from your influence. What is your go-to song to sing in the shower? <laughs> That depends. It just depends on the day. Uh, today I was listening to Ice Cube. Today was a good day. <laughs> I didn't even have to use my AK. <laughs> That's kind of awesome. Yeah. Um, so you've got a broad range. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I listen to all genres of music. If it's good music, the way I look at it is, it's, if it's good music, it's good music. It doesn't matter. You know? right. At any point in time, you could walk on our tour bus and you'll hear us listening to George Strait or Snoop Dogg or Frank Sinatra <laughs> even. I mean, right. it's, it's just a, we've got a broad horizon of, of music that we listen to, awesome. and so yeah, I mean, it's it just a, awesome. it's, it's good music. It's good music. Right. Um, again, you talked about this, but if you had to choose one person, who would you say was your biggest music inspiration? As far as music goes, yeah, Merle Haggard. Okay. No. He's a big one. Oh yeah, rest in peace. But as far as uh, style like the cowboy hat and the style and mm -hmm. everything i'd say more george Strait. Mm -hmm. but uh yeah okay um what was your favorite country song of 2016 of 2016 um there's a lot of good ones i love granger smith he's a good buddy of mine mm -hmm. so i like that new song he's got if the boot fits mm -hmm. Or uh, his his hit single uh back road song mm -hmm. you know that, that went number one i guess this song getting ready to go top 10. I think it may be top 10 now. Or yeah. So, thanks, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> um, what are you most looking forward to um, for your 2017 tour this year with Lee Bryce and Justin Moore? I'm looking forward to learning. You know, just, just taking a little piece of each of those artists and, and putting them into my show. And just me as a person. You know, I've hung out with Lee behind the scenes a little bit. Um, had a few drinks with him. And I've uh, done a few shows with Justin Moore. And uh, they're just great people. Their whole crew's great. Everybody's great. And that's what we want to instill in our, in our group mm -hmm. as well. And, uh, you know, I just want to take as much of, of their show as I can and put it in my own. Awesome. Yeah. Um, I hope that it's a fun tour. I'm sure it will be. Oh, I'm sure it will be a blast. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of people out there trying to make it in this big, bad country music world. Um, what advice would you give to those people who are really trying hard to make it? Don't waver. People are going to tell you, you got to do this and you got to do that. And most of the time they're right. Sometimes they're right. But you got to be you. You know, you can't, I'm not going to take my cowboy hat off just because somebody asked me to. You know, I'm not going to take my boots off just because somebody asked me to. But the best thing you can do is listen and take what they say and acknowledge it and, and, and think about it. But at the end of the day, you have to be you. And you can't let anybody else change that. That's good advice. Um, <laughs> switching gears a little bit. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, what is your guilty pleasure food? Oh, um... Boy, I don't know. I mean, I like a lot of stuff. I like a lot of <laughs> junk food. Uh, my favorite, like, candy bar, I guess, would be like a... I love Twix, Snickers. Mm. I get, I become a diva, so I gotta eat my Snickers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's funny. Um, okay, cool. So if you could collaborate with one artist, you know, this year, whenever, dead or alive, who would it be? Oh, dead or alive, Elvis Presley, Merle Haggard, mm. Elvis Presley, probably. Would you do, would you do an Elvis Presley song if you sang with Elvis? Oh, good lord, yes. Yes. Oh, yeah. Do you know which one? Um, uh, maybe like Crying in the Chapel, mm. or like. Uh, in the ghetto, mm -hmm. um, American Trilogy, I would love. The I would pay to see that. Oh, I would too, <laughs> trust me. <laughs> I think anybody would, actually, to see, to see Elvis Elvis. sing it just one more time. <laughs> um, so, one last question, and then we'll get to some of the audience questions we have here. Um, what's your favorite thing about the country music genre? I love that, that everybody gets along. It's all a big family. Uh, you know, it's not this big competition. It's not this, oh, he's doing this, I'm doing this. It's all family, you know, brotherhood, sisterhood. Mm -hmm. And that's what I love the most about it. And it's all country music. You know, people say pop country. People say 
grow country. Mm -hmm. People say traditional country. So if you notice something in all three of those, there's one word that is the same in all three of them. It's country. It's all country music. And that's what I love. It's just, again, to uh, resort back to my other answer, um, you know, I, did, I grew up on this. That doesn't mean that this guy grew up on that, you know. Um, so it's all the same message. It's just a matter of how you get it out there. Um, definitely a huge camaraderie in the country music scene. So it's really fun that you could be a part of that. Oh, for sure. Um, a lot of people asking questions. A lot of people have asked, are you going to the UK? Do you have plans to go to the UK? Man, there are so many people that want me to come there, and I want to go there so bad. I've always dreamed about going overseas in general. Um, so hopefully there's, there's, there's some stuff. I'm not sure about this year. Mm -hmm. I would love it more than anything. But, uh. I can't say 100% quite yet, uh, but I would love to. I, I, that would have tickled me to death. <laughs> you uh, think they'd let this old redneck in over there? <laughs> I think they'd enjoy it. Um, so, Gene Dick Dickinson wants to know, what is your favorite song on vinyl? What's up, Gene? <laughs> uh, I'd have to say vinyl. Uh, vinyl is probably my favorite song. Um, just because, I mean, the message that it sends. You know, it's, it's, it's a... It's a love song, you know. It's it's saying, our 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 love is like vinyl, a vinyl record, which has been along around forever. It's timeless. Everyone knows, you know. It's always going to be here, mm -hmm. um, and I think that's the same way. Our love will always be here, and it's timeless and it's classic. And that's that. At least that's the message that I I get from the song, and that's uh, probably my favorite song. Just the groove, everything about it. I love it. That's awesome. Um, Cassie wants to know what your favorite venue is to play at. Oh, Cassie, that's a good question. Uh, Grand Ole Opry, hands down. Since September 5th of 2015, uh, that's when we made our debut, and I'll never forget that day. Uh, we've played about 24 or 25 times now, and, and I keep track of that because that, to me, it just is so amazing to play on that stage where there's so many different artists, so many people that I've looked up to and, and look up to in today's time as well have played that stage and are playing that stage as we speak. And uh, just growing up, that's something that I always wanted to do, was play the Grand Ole Opry. And whether it's the Grand Ole Opry or the Ryman, it's, every time feels like the first time. Um, that's awesome. Um, William wants to know if there was oh, a... Oh, good name, William. <laughs> if there was a moment you knew you had made it. Um, we're still making it. We're making it. We're climbing. We're climbing the staircase. We're still at the bottom, but we're getting there. We're climbing as fast as we can. Um, but thank you. Um, I think the thing that I moved to town on was I always wanted to be like George Strait, and Keith Whitley, and Mark Chestnut. And that's why I moved to town. You know, I think I would feel like I've quote unquote made it um, if someone moves to town because of me. You know, if someone says, you know what, I love that William Michael. He sings that country music, and I, I want to be just like him. I think. That, to me, would be so special. But, of course, I feel like I've made it every day. Good Lord blesses me in every way, every day. So I, I feel like I've always made it. That's awesome. Um, Shelly wants to know what your, the you feel is the most personal song you've written. Um, wow. I don't know. I don't think it would be out anywhere. Um, I don't think it's definitely not on the album. Hmm. Um, this album, anyhow, maybe in an album to come if we're lucky enough to have a second, third, fourth album. Um, I don't know, that's a hard question because I always try to write, I write subconsciously. So it's like I don't just go in saying, oh, I'm more in love today than I've ever been, or I'm more hurt today than I've ever been. I think my heart and my brain just kind of feel that and, and I just kind of gravitate to that. So everything's kind of personal um, in a sense. But uh, that's a hard question. I've written a lot of songs since I've been in Nashville. Um, that's a good question. I'll actually have to look into that. You know, I'll have to go back and pull up all my songs and think about that. Some introspection, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> very cool. Um, oh, Stephanie Sachs has a very fun question. Okay. Um, if you could do something other than be a country music singer, what would you do? I'd be a country music writer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I do something in country music. It don't matter what. Can't get away from it. No, okay. even if it's just serving beer over a jukebox, country <laughs> music. It don't matter. 
Uh, awesome. Well, thank you so much for chatting with us today. Thank you. Um, thank you for your questions, everybody. Of course. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in, um, and have a great day. Happy New Year. <laughs>